Welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Today was... Today was the third day of testimony in the Senate impeachment trial of Donald Trump. Now, we've heard... <laughs> Bank it down. We've heard a detailed description of perhaps the greatest abuse of power ever by a U.S. president and... Turns out America is watching. In fact, day one of Trump's impeachment trial drew 11 million viewers. That's a lot of people, okay? That's... That's yeah. not Super Bowl ratings, but it's at least Puppy Bowl ratings. <laughs> Though that's not really fair to compare puppies to U.S. senators. The puppies still have their balls. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it in tonight's Don and the Giant Impeach. President Zelensky, I want quid pro quo. As we speak, the Democratic House managers are still making their case, and they're trying to keep it simple. Like when Jerry Nadler tried to explain why crime is bad. The framers had three specific offenses in mind. Abuse of power, betrayal of the nation through foreign entanglements, and corruption of elections. You can think of these as the ABCs of high crimes and misdemeanors. Abuse, betrayal, and corruption. Ooh, ABC, that's good. Uh, let me try a simple one. Uh, the impeachment one, two, threes. Trump never won the popular vote. He's too corrupt to have the job, and three years is really enough. Nadler took a minute to burn Lindsey Graham with Graham's own words. Then House manager Lindsey Graham, who in President Clinton's trial flatly rejected the notion that impeachable offenses are limited to violations of established law. Here is what he said. What's a high crime? How about if an important person hurts somebody of low means? Doesn't even have to be a crime. It's just when you start using your office and you're acting in a way that hurts people, you've committed a high crime. All right, all right. That seems like hypocrisy, but that was Lindsay 20 years ago. People change. Views evolve. Spines disintegrate. <laughs> now, the trial, uh, the trial days have been going for hours and hours, which is a lot for some of the senators. Today we learned, in order to be ready for the late nights, Iowa Republican Chuck Grassley has been sleeping in until 7.20 a.m. <laughs> wow, 7.20 a.m. No wonder he looks so well-rested. <laughs> By law, senators are supposed to sit quietly and pay attention, but today, according to reporters in the gallery, Senator Burr has a fidget spinner. <laughs> Rand Paul has quite the sketch of the Capitol going, and Marsha Blackburn is reading a book. <laughs> that book? Chicken soup for when you've sold your soul. <laughs> and... It's a fine book. Oh, uh, uh, yeah? It's a fine book. Wow. It's a fine book. Interesting. The rules also say they're supposed to stay in the room for the entire trial. But during last night's session, Lindsey Graham left the Senate chamber for over 20 minutes. When a reporter asked him where he went, Graham replied, to the bathroom. <laughs> 20 minutes in the bathroom. Those are teenage numbers. <laughs> Lindsey! Lindsey, what's going on in there? Are you on the phone? Are you on the phone getting marching orders from the White House? Uh, uh, no, I swear I'm masturbating. <laughs> it's not believable. It's not believable, Chris. Ooh. It's not just Republicans who are walking out. The trial did not end until almost 10 p.m. last night, but Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein walked out of the Senate chamber at 8.45. She said good night to two reporters standing nearby and left the Capitol. Well, that's a bold new take on the Democrats' battle cry. When they go low, we go home. <laughs> One reason senators might be ditching is that no electronics are allowed in the Senate chamber during the trial, which has caused some lawmakers to revert to more primitive means of communication, like passing notes. <laughs> we actually got our hands on one of the notes. Do you like covering up Trump's crimes? Yes, no, or God will never forgive what we have done. All of the above? All of 
the above. But you know, if senators are looking for things to do without their phones, we've created an activity book they can play <laughs> called 101 Fun Things to Do in the Senate Other Than Pay Attention to Impeachment. <laughs> it's loaded with puzzles like getting money to Ukraine through the maze of corruption, <laughs> spot six differences between these two impeachments, and if those two are too hard, connect one dot. <laughs> so I'm just a... There it is. One. Just one dot. One dot, please. Mm -hmm. Some senators use a technique that I've embraced for years, eating because you're bored. <laughs> and the snack rooms are well-stocked. Mounds of snacks could be seen in both the Democratic and Republican cloakrooms. And Dick Durbin referred to the bounty in the Democratic room as a Costco dump. <laughs> Incidentally, a Costco dump is the real reason Lindsey Graham was in the bathroom for about 20 minutes. <laughs> But it's just a lot of cheese balls. A lot of cheese balls. You okay? You okay over there? Everybody okay? Mm. While Republicans are fighting tooth and nail to keep Trump in office, Democrats are still gumming away at each other in the primaries. And I'll tell you all about it in tonight's. You, off the board. I'll come up and drag you off. A progressive agenda. I don't know about you, but I'm having a good time. It's crazy. Yuri Road to the White House 2020. Big news. Thank you. Applause for our graphics department. Incredible. Yes. Big news from the campaign of former New York City mayor and man whose upstairs neighbors just started doing it. <laughs> Mike Bloomberg. Bloomberg has vowed to spend upwards of a billion dollars to defeat Donald Trump, and recently he announced that he plans on helping to fund whoever wins the party's nomination, even if it isn't him. That is great to know. That is gratifying. That's nice. It's nice to know he's got you back on that one. That's cool. Putting money where That's wonderful. Feet. That's wonderful to hear, but it could get awkward if Bernie is the nominee. Thank you, Mike, for the billion dollars. I promise to put it toward a worthy cause, taxing the hell out of anyone with a billion dollars. <laughs> but not everyone is on board with this plan, specifically Donald Trump, who tweeted, Mini Mike Bloomberg is playing poker with this foolhardy and unsuspecting Democrat rivals. He says that if he loses, he will live his win. In the primaries, he will spend money helping whoever the Democrat nominee is. By doing this, he figures they won't hit him as hard. Dot, 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 during his hopeless presidential campaign. They will remain silent. The fact is, when Minnie loses, is he will be spending a very little of his money on these clowns because he will consider himself to be the biggest clown of them all, and he will be right. Wow. I, I guess I don't know how to play poker. <laughs> you gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when the dams are clowns. Mike's the biggest clown, he's right. <laughs> but it's a long time ago, so he said it was poker. It was way, way up here, he said poker, and way down here is the punchline. But Bloomberg's not out yet. In fact, he's still expanding his 2020 operation, most recently by offering fancy perks, like three catered meals daily and luring staffers with a MacBook Pro and an iPhone 11. By comparison, the Sanders campaign team has offered its staff a nickel for the phone booth and a zoetrope where it really looks like where the horse is running. <laughs> the train comes into the station. The Bloomberg perks begin even before people get hired. One staffer, being courted by Bloomberg, said that when she arrived at her interview, she was greeted with a hotel-style buffet. Ooh, a hotel-style buffet. So, a waffle station and one woman yelling, Kelsey, do hands don't go in the oatmeal. Mommy told you. It's hot, Kelsey. Kylie. It's twins. The president has 53 senators doing his bidding at his impeachment trial. But they're not alone, because this week, Trump appointed GOP House members to the impeachment defense team. 
but one of Trump's JV grovelers somehow got left off the team. Florida congressman and man unhinging his jaw to swallow all of Trump's lies. <laughs> Matt Gates. Gates is famous for being a Trump fanboy. His campaign homepage features quotes calling him the Trumpiest congressman in Trump's Washington, Trump's ultimate defender, and Trump's best buddy. So why, why did Gates get left off the impeachment fun club? Because he dared disagree with Trump a single time. After Trump's drone strike on Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, Gates pushed back and voted to rein in Trump's war powers. Big mistake if your lips leave Trump's ass even for a second. <laughs> Just to put on some chapstick, you're dead to him. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. <laughs> Chris Cuomo is here. When we come back, is Jon Stewart underneath my desk? The answer better be yes. Stick around. <laughs> 